We're back now with Dr. Sutton, and we want to talk about this major new report this morning coming out mm -hmm. from the Amer American Cancer Society, and it says that overall cancer deaths are declining, mm -hmm. which is incredibly Good positive news. news, obviously, as the fight continues. But there's this troubling increase in particular of colon and breast cancer in younger adults. Yes. What, do, what do you make of this? It's, it's concerning for many different reasons. I think, number one, we see the benefit of when we have smoking campaigns and educating people about smoking. Significantly, if you look 10 years ago, those over, over the age of 20 smoked m significantly more than they do today. Mm. That's one of the reasons why we've seen a reduction in the rates of cancer and 4.1 million deaths have been averted. But when you look at the rates of colon cancer, specifically for those o under the age of 50, yeah. you see that rate start to increase. And unfortunately now, colon cancer is the number one cause of death for men under the age of 50. And I think a lot of this is associated to a variety of different factors. Number one, I think possibly there's more awareness and education about this diagnosis. So it's possible that more people are seeking out that assistance. But then environmentally, when you look at environmental toxins, rates of obesity, oh. stress, lack yeah. of actress, exercise, diet and processed foods, that might also be contributing to the rates that we're seeing in younger adults. But at the end of the day, this is an important reminder that if you have any symptoms or if you have any personal risk or you know that you have a family risk, you should start a conversation with your primary I don't provider. know if Chadwick Boseman had a family risk, but he was 43, so it was before that age yes. when you get that screening. So it is a difficult one, but it's something that we all need to explore for ourselves. Well, why, right? not, why not just lower it? We were talking about this. Why not just lower the screening age requirement even more? Or recommendation even more. And there are some that are pushing for that. I think that's a difficult stance, uh, mainly because when you're looking at population studies in public health, you're trying your best to do the most that you can with what you have. And also, colonoscopies are not a benign procedure. And so you don't want to just provide them without known cause gotcha. and, and a reasonable understanding of what is the risk. But I think overall, we've seen some corrections. We've seen a reduction in the age of colon cancer screenings from the age of 50 to the age of 45. And that might decrease in the future depending on what additional data comes in. But right now, it really also can change based on, again, your family history right. and your... And the uh, same could be said about breast history. cancer as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Breast cancer as well. And also when you look at these numbers, what's more concerning, as we were discussing during the break, is the disparities that exist. As black men, we are more likely to be diagnosed with later stage colon <laughs> cancer. We are more likely to be diagnosed with more aggressive forms and we're more likely to die. And we're less likely to be offered screening colonoscopies. Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of patients, to understand these numbers so that you can act as your own advocate to get the tests that you need. Yes, because this study, as as we discussed, also talked about how uterine cancer is on the up Yes. Tick. So um, that's also very concerning because I thought that a lot of us were getting our screenings, but apparently there's disparities in that too. There are, and I think it's also due, it's speaking to the cracks that we're seeing in the system overall of healthcare. It's becoming more and more difficult to get that appointment with that primary care provider. And as an emergency physician, I have to applaud our primary care providers. They do a tremendous <laughs> amount of work in saving our population from preventable disease, but the conversation and the access needs to be there, and that's what we have to work on. And for young people reading this new report, what can be done? Are there certain questions you, sh you should be asking your primary care doctor or lifestyle changes like a diet change, yeah. exercise change? What do you recommend? Well, I think, number one, the things that we can modify in our life are things that we should. Number one, our diet. Uh, of, of course, we understand smoking is directly related to many of these cancers, so you should abstain from that. And other toxins like alcohol, you should limit your consumption of these products because that increases your risk. And then in, in, in terms of education and information and awareness, when you show up to your doctor's appointment, you should understand exactly what is your history? What is your risk? Have all your medications. Bring an advocate so that they can understand and hear because I know when I'm talking to patients, I can understand how it feels. Sometimes there's so much information you can't take it all in. But educate yourself, understand your risks, modify what you can, thank you. and get the help that you need. All right. Doctor, we'll be right thank back. you. Of course.